In this video, we're going to talk about how to read imperial calipers. So I have a caliper here, and on the bottom I have my SI units, and on the top I have my imperial units. Here is 0 inches all the way to 1 inch, and the inch is broken up into 16 parts, so each of these little ticks here is 1 16th of an inch. This here is my fixed scale. So that's my fixed scale. And then I have my moving scale. And the purpose of the moving scale here is to give us a more precise reading. So the moving scale divides up my sixteenths uh, of an inch into another eight parts. So if I take a sixteenth of an inch and I divide it by eight, that would be the same as saying 1 16th times 1 over 8, which is 1 over 128. That means that each of these little ticks here is worth 1 128th of an inch. Now when I read a caliper, I take two readings. I take an initial reading, which tells me, um, a, an, gives me an approximation, gives me a good idea about what my measurement is. And then I give an, a second reading, which gives me a more precise measurement it tells me, for example, how far past a certain sixteenth I am. So my initial reading here on my caliper, I need to look on the moving scale at the zero, and I want to see where does that fall on the fixed scale. This is my initial reading. Well, it falls just past one sixteenth of an inch. So my initial reading tells me I'm somewhere between one sixteenth and two sixteenths of an inch. What I'm going to write down for my initial reading is 1 16th of an inch. My second reading is going to tell me how far past 1 16th of an inch I am. And it's going to do that by using the moving scale. We're going to look at the moving scale and we're going to look what is the first tick on the moving scale that lines up with a tick on the fixed scale. And it happens to be this one right here. That's the third tick which means 3 one twenty-eighths of an inch. Each of those ticks is worth 1 one twenty-eighth of an inch. So 3 one twenty-eighths of an inch. So I get my final reading by adding those two amounts. I have a sixteenth of an inch, and I'm going to add to that 3 one hundred and twenty-eighths of an inch. Well, in order to order these fraction, uh, add these fractions, I need a common denominator. The common denominator here is going to be 128. So I have 8 over 128. I multiplied the top and bottom here by 8 to get that. Plus 3 128 of an inch. So my total 8 plus 3 is 11. So that's 11 128 of an inch. Let's do another example. My first reading on this caliper, if I look up on the imperial side here, is 1, 2, 3, 4. It looks like the zero lands just past, or maybe halfway past, 4 sixteenths of an inch. So my initial reading is going to be 4 sixteenths of an inch. And I can reduce this if I like. I could say, well, 4 sixteenths of an inch is simply a quarter inch. My second reading. I look on the fix, uh, moving scale and I say, well, where does this line up with the line of the fixed scale? Not here, not here, not here. It looks like here. I have this nice little arrow telling me that that's true. So four ticks, that is four one twenty-eighths of an inch. My second reading is going to be four one hundred and twenty-eighths of an inch. And I can reduce this fraction as well. And I can say that this is simply one thirty-second of an inch. So my final reading, I need to add those two measurements. I have a quarter inch, and I'm going to add one thirty-seconds of an inch. My common denominator here is going to be 32. If I multiply quarter, top and bottom, by 8, I will get 8 over 32, so 8 thirty-seconds of an inch plus 1 thirty-second of an inch. 8 plus 1 is 9. So I got 9 30 seconds of an inch. So my final reading here is 9 30 seconds of an inch. And that is how you read an imperial caliper.